Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. Last week I made a little sled for my router. Now I want to use it to actually make a project. You might have seen on my shop tour that I use a lot of Stanley cases to hold my small parts. At the moment they're all shoved under a bench, so I need to make a shelf for them. Their shelf, more of a shelving unit. So first I need to break down loads of bits of MDF. And this is so much easier now I've got this bench and the UJK path dogs. I can line the board up against a couple of dogs, then line the track up on a couple of dogs 90 degrees, and then just run the saw along it. This is a project I've needed to do for a while, I've been putting it off because it's so hard to cut down big sheets. A circular saw is just not accurate enough, and the table saw doesn't have the capacity and would be a bit dangerous. Stanley cases come in two depths. I have more of the shallow ones, so I'm going to make the first lot of units for those. So to work out the spacing, I take a unit and then put a bit of wood that's going to be the shelf on top. So you can see I've cut this bit of wood as a template, leaving a little bit of space so I can pull the trays in and out. I then use this template to mark up the sides of the unit. If I was using the track saw, I could just cut along these lines as the cut is made at the edge of the track, but the router doesn't work like that. I made a pass on a scrap piece of wood and you can see that the groove it's cut is 5cm off the track. I went back to the lines I'd previously drawn and with a piece of wood cut to 5cm, I drew another line that's 5cm off the first one. Now, there's probably an easier way of doing this, but this is my first time using it. And if I was using the same router bit each time, I could just draw a line on the router base and I'd know that it was 5cm off. But doing things for the first time is always a learning curve, and I'm sure I'll come up with a better way of doing this. So to make the pass, I just set the board up the same way as I was making a cut using the dogs and the clamp to hold the board in place and then the dogs and the fence at 90 degrees. So if all my measuring works out, the track is on the second line I've drawn and the router bit will actually go along the first line I've drawn. And it did, it actually worked really well. I ended up using the jig exactly how I intended to, one hand on the router, keeping a finger on the power button and the other hand on the handle of the jig. I actually used the handle on the jig to keep it on the track and that to actually push it along. I had the extractor attached, but it never does a good job with the router, and it makes quite a lot of mess. For each pass I had to come back and hoover it out. Now that I've had a go at this, the one thing I'd do different next time is probably clamp the two boards together so I could do both sides at the same time, making sure both lots of slots lined up perfectly. But as this was my first go with the jig, I wasn't feeling that ambitious and thought I'd take it a bit slower. I did have a little dry fit first off camera. I wasn't that confident in my work that it would all fit. But everything went fine, so time to get it together with some glue. This is 18mm MDF, and I got a 18.2mm router bit which seem to fit them absolutely perfect. They just need a little tap in place and you get a really nice snug friction fit. The trouble is with sheet goods, they're all slightly different thicknesses depending on where you get them from. So this was from Wix and this router works with that. So the other side goes on and just got to line everything up and then I can get some clamps on to hold everything together. I'm not going to use any fastenings at all on the shelves they're just going to get glued and go into these little dados. I got some clamps on the front and the back to hold it all together and then just left it a couple of hours to set up before moving on. As this is 18mm thick, I set my marking gauge to 9mm and scribed a line down the side. I did this on the top, the bottom and the back and then I could pre-drill and countersink some holes along that line. When you're drilling holes, it's always best to make sure you've actually tightened the chuck up first. So time to get the top on, or the bottom on. This cabinet doesn't really matter which way up it is. One thing I should have done differently is I pre-drilled the holes in the top or the bottom but not where they went into the sides and at the ends you could split it. 
but I got lucky. Again, always make sure the bit is tightly done up in the drill. It's not that difficult. At the back of the unit, I'd cut the top and the bottom 18mm wider, or longer, so that the back piece would just fit into the gap. This time I was more sensible and drilled the pilot holes through both pieces. I managed to drill and screw all these ones in without the bit falling out. Always good to be able to learn from your mistakes. Lucky I make loads so I learn lots. That's it all done. I think this is going to be one of these projects I will think why did I not do this years ago. It can make my life so much easier. I'll put a link down below where I got the system for the bench and all the hardware for it. Thanks for watching and please subscribe for more videos.